Hello, agentpreneurs, and welcome to today's episode of the Daily List Report. As always, I'm your host, Randy Shozaki, also one of the founders of List Report. It's a great free tool for 300,000 agents across the country. Make sure you check that out. There's a link below. Also, of course, we've been doing these fun giveaways all through the month of November. I think they're calling it Thanks Giveaway or something like that. My team put something together pretty cool. We gave away a bunch of copies last Friday. We're doing some more stuff. There's a little contest below, so make sure you enter that. Um, we've got a really cool guest on today. Really excited about today's show. So we've got Trevor Jones joining. Uh, he's a broker at EXP Realty. And, but he's also a video guy, and he's had a really varied background and career in entertainment and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm going to let him tell that story. He's also coming to us from a very interesting location, which you're about to see in just a moment here. Of course, while you're here, please consider subscribing to the channel. Click the little bell so that you're notified. Also, of course, we've got, uh, let me pull up some links for him. So we've got Trevor's YouTube page here. He's got a great following, making some great videos to help agents make better videos, right? We've talked a lot about video. So we've got that right here. Check on the link below. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. We've also got uh, his Instagram here. This is uh, Trevor Jones Creator. Link below. Definitely check that out. And then we're going to talk maybe towards the end about another channel that he's recently created called Life Untethered, which is pretty fascinating. So... Without further ado, let's bring Trevor on. Trevor, welcome to the show. Thanks for doing this. Hey, thanks, Randy. Super excited to be here, man. This Absolutely. is uh, totally fun. Yeah, no, I'm excited yeah, too. Everything, I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, with this uh, whole new world we're in, I guess everybody's kind of meeting like this now, right? <laughs> Which is people can see it as like, a, oh, a bummer or a, a huge opportunity. Yeah, I think it's been a huge opportunity. You know, we were talking, you know, in sort of our prep for this, Trevor, I've been doing this for six months and I've been able to have on all kinds of amazing people because they don't have to come to a studio where nobody has to get on an airplane. Like I'm talking to people at home. And speaking of that, Trevor, I'm talking to you someplace pretty interesting. You're not at home, are you? Um, well, I, I, I technically am at home. That's true. If you want to look at it that way. But uh, I am in an RV. At the moment, I'm living full-time in a 38-foot toy hauler. We bought this thing vandalized. My wife did on purpose because she wanted a tiny home. So we gutted the entire inside and redid the whole thing. In fact, I just dropped a video on my other channel um, yesterday about that whole thing. And so we're living full-time in this RV while we're building a house where our, our daughter and granddaughter live in, in Southern Oregon. Um, and we figured you know, we sold our house in Southern California where I lived my entire life. Life is too short to have the same day every day. I mean, life is a collection of experiences and the more varied and interesting they can be, the better your life is going to be. So like I got, I got tired of like every day being Groundhog Day. And so we just were like, you know, let's just change it up a lot. In fact, right now I'm in Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. Never been here. I'm at a, a state park here, which is like beautiful. I'm staring out the window at a lake right now. So like right. every week I wake up, I wake up home in a different state. I was in Kansas last week, Colorado the week before that. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a fun life. And we're selling, we've been selling houses on the road too. So it's, it's crazy. Like because- I want to learn more yeah. about that in just a moment. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's amazing that you're doing, how long have you been on the road? We've been like four and a half months. I mean, before that it took us like two or three months to get this thing, you know, livable. So we were like, you know, camped out at different play at my sister's house and my brother's house and trying to get this thing worked on, staying there while we're working on the thing. And then, uh, and then, you know, after we sold our house to the California, we lived in an apartment for a month while we we're getting all this stuff figured out. That's and, but yeah, like four and a half months on the road, which is, it's been awesome. That's amazing. Well, so I'm pulling up right now, uh, Life Untethered, which is a relatively new or newish channel, right? Um, yeah, Trevor, that you new. put together that is documenting this journey and your, yep. your tiny home and all of this awesome stuff. So definitely check that out. I think what's really cool, Trevor, about, as we discussed about this time, is that I've met so many people who have completely changed their lives in powerful ways. They've moved to places they've always wanted to live. Or I told you I interviewed a candidate recently from an RV because she and her boyfriend were doing the same thing and touring the country and awesome. making life happen. And I just love that so much. That's awesome, man. And it's funny because people think, oh, I don't talk about my videos. You know, we're t- you know, we'll talk about video in a minute. But like, you got to live a better life. If your life's boring, then, then change it up. Like nobody, we live in, <laughs> I'm this country in the, in the world. And we can do whatever we want with our lives, no matter who's a president, no matter what pandemics are happening around the world, we can do whatever we want with our lives. So if you don't like your life, change it up, man. If you don't like being an agent in, you know, downtown L.A., you know, 
move to the other side of the country, move to go somewhere else. It's like, change it up, man. Opportunity is, is unlimited. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. I appreciate that, Trevor. And I think, you know, hopefully that's a, a moment of inspiration for everybody watching right now because it's easy to get stuck in your routine and feel trapped and feel like you can't make a change. And, you know, there's you can do it right. I mean, your evidence of that. Yep. There's so many people who are proof of that, which is awesome. All right. Yep. So, you know, Trevor, let's 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 talk a little bit about your background because you have an interesting background. You're a real estate agent. You're Talk a little bit, about, introduce yourself, maybe spend a minute or two and tell everybody sort of how, a little bit about your journey and how you got to where you are today. Short version? That's a short version to start. <laughs> yeah. Degree in business administration. I, I remember seeing, like, I remember seeing a, uh, a, a TV show and this guy was driving around in a Porsche in Beverly Hills. It was a real estate agent. Like, I need to get in real estate. And that was 35 years ago, dude. So yeah. I got a degree. First it was... I think it was business. It was business administration, finance, and I changed business real estate. And then I did nothing with real estate. I was a licensed private investigator in Southern California for 10 years. And I freaking hated it, man. It's like, take statement, do report, take statement, do report, find bad guys, do report. It was like insurance junk. It was, it was terrible. And so then I uh, got into photography, started doing the side, became like a wedding and portrait photographer. And I remember thinking like, it's be careful what you wish for because I'm thinking, I want to be a photographer. And then it's like, Wow, it's Friday night. I got a wedding tomorrow. I got to get my gear ready, buy the film, the days of film, get it all packed up, and just burn my whole Saturday shoot. Boring wedding, and I hate weddings. Like, what have I done? You know, it's like, you know, so I, yeah. And then I started learning about this editing thing. And I got a job at a place called Load Media Editing. We'd take the Reuters newsfeed and we'd edit the news for this, for this um, internet channel. And I, I was 36 years old, six kids, and this was a drastic change. A big, you talk about taking risks, right? Yeah. Eight bucks an hour with six kids working graveyard. Never done that in my life to try to get in, you know, and I'm editing oh. the news, you know, in the middle of the night. And I'm like, well, this is fun and different, but it's not making any money. So then I got a job teaching. The Final Cut Pro came out like 2000. I got a yeah. job teaching Final Cut Pro literally physically in Hollywood. And I would teach like, you know, Joe Blow to movie trailer editors, people in the industry. I would teach everybody. Final Cut Pro, this new up and coming program. Did that for a couple of years. And I'm telling you, Hollywood is 100% who you know. People say it doesn't matter. It's like your skill. No, your skill keeps you. Get, let's keep the job. Who you know gets you the job. So I'm like, okay, let me. I got a job being like a tech place at a trailer house called Trailer Park. They make movie trailers. I know trailer right? Park. I know a lot of people from there. That's We won't get into that, but I know Trailer Park oh, very well. It wasn't well. Trailer Park. I talk, no, no, no. I'm lying. I, I did not work. It was, I got the job at Aspect Ratio back then. Okay, this is like 20 it. years ago, right? Okay. It was Aspect Ratio. Trailer Park. I taught like all the editors from Trailer Park oh, at where I was working at a place called Load it. Media, which is later Dr. Ross talk. But no, I got a job at Aspect Ratio, freelancing, another huge risk, right? Mm -hmm. I'm freelancing, part time, you know, doing their tech support for their edit bays and stuff. And then some other guy goes, Some somebody liked me and they go, Hey, somebody start a new trailer house. Um, this guy named Tom Merchant. Um, he needs a guy to give him some tech support. So I, I go over to remember I'm making eight bucks an hour, right? Mm -hmm. And well, before that, you know, three months before that. I go over there and he's like, yeah, I need some help with this stuff. And I thought he just needed like a day or two of support. And Tom's like, I'm looking for a full-time guy. How much do you want? And I'm like, um, 35 bucks an hour. He's like, so <laughs> dang, I should have been for 50, right? Yeah, exactly. And so that, was, that was the beginning because I took major risks and I was nice to people and I got in to Hollywood. And I was never, I'm not a Hollywood guy. I've never been, a Hollywood, I don't even care about directors, actors, movies. I'm not even that mm -hmm. guy at all. I was yeah. never to the scene or the parties or any of that stuff at all. But I was like tech boy. And then I eventually, you know, like I want to be an editor. So I became an editor there and you know, helped start another, you know, I was a, you know, one of the guys that wasn't a founder, but I was in the days, early days of another company. And I, and so I became an editor working on movie trailers and TV spots. And at first it was like stuff from Fox. And then for the last eight years, I was at a place called Soapbox Films where we did, um, our biggest client was Disney and Marvel. So mm -hmm. everything I worked on was, you know, Captain, you know, commercials, TV spots for Disney Channel, Disney XD for, you know, Avengers and Captain America and Spider-Man and Thor Ragnarok was the last thing I worked on. So I was editing that stuff for eight years. And it was a great gig. It was like great people. Um, mm -hmm. But is it like, well, Trevor, why would you leave such an amazing thing? Remember we yes. had a guy that was teaching us, you know, we worked on different editing systems and a, a Adobe guy came in and taught us stuff. He goes, dude, I'd kill to be you, you know? And, and I, I got, I got lucky by taking risks, you know, there's a little bit of less luck. It's take risks and be nice to people. And like, why would you leave entertainment? Well, 
I was not passionate about editing TV spots for movies that were coming out in six months. Like it was fun. I get to watch Thor 17 times. Great. You know, waiting for scripts, answering to people, asking a guy that's, you know, 20 years younger than me, if I can leave to go to a, an event for my kids, you know, and being like, I, I need, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Like I need freedom. So for them to say, you need to be here at these hours, even if there's nothing to do, cause we're waiting for stuff or whatever is like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't dig that. And so they sensed it. And as things sort of changed with the internet, they three and a half years ago, they said, Trevor, we're laying you off. So I got laid off, but I already had one foot out the door because I had my license. My wife was working in real estate mm -hmm. and I was planning on within six months or so of bailing anyway. And they could just, they could just sense it. They knew. And they felt really bad. Like I love, I'm still attached to touch some people there. You know, it was like, it was a, it was a, you know, amicable separation. And I didn't even think for an instant to look for another job because I'm like, this is it. This is our answer. Now we can go full on in real estate. And so my wife was already doing okay in real estate. I got my license. I went straight to my broker license because of my, my degree in real estate business. And we did great, man. Like our, our first year full time in real estate, the first calendar year was, was tw I got laid off in September, 2017, I think our first calendar year in real estate was, I think 20, I think 2018. And we did, um, we almost doubled. We made almost 400 grand that year. We grossed almost 400 grand that year by doing, by doing video, man. I'm like, wow. Oh, these, these realtors, they make terrible videos. I'll make better videos. And, and it wasn't like, you know, I got people like calling me out. Oh, I saw your video on list my house. It was like, we were in front of everybody. You know, we were active in our community, active on social media and pumping out videos all the time. And you know, when people were ready to sell, like, Hey, come list my house, come sell my house. So we did almost 400 grand that year. Um, and all we did was open houses and video. And it's just about getting in front of people. And I mean, that's, 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 and, that, and now it's kind of transitioned where, you know, we've been doing some transactions on the road, but my wife literally does, she does all the hard heavy lifting. Um, and I have my, my, main, my main focus is my YouTube channels now where I'm teaching realtors to create better videos. Cause that's, that's like video is my passion. Like, believe it or not, making a YouTube video where I teach a realtor to make better videos is more fun for me than to work on spider-man or avengers or ragnarok because it's my content i That's write the key. Film, yeah. edit there it's all me stuff so this making videos like myself is 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 totally fun and there there's no better way to grow a business That's now awesome. than video i mean obviously now with this stuff so anyway there's a long intro but uh well i was wondering trevor i was like what if i had asked for the long version you gave me the short version <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I appreciate that. Now, Trevor. because I've been on camera so often, it's like, get me on camera. And I can't stop talking, dude. No, it's and, true. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. When you're making these YouTube videos, you're sitting there, you know, you and your RV staring into a camera lens and you got to fill all the time. You've got no crew, right? You've got no one yep. else there. You're just sitting there with the camera and you're, you're filling it all up. So I can totally relate to that. I try my best not to talk too much on this show and let my guests do the talking, but that's amazing. So yeah. Great, great segue into video, right? So, and you said something there that I think is very important. So as we touched on, I used to also work in the entertainment industry and it was more on the technology side, but we worked on X Factor, American Idol, and a bunch of cool stuff. And it was, it was awesome. cool for a hot minute, right? To be on set and to right. see all that stuff. Yeah, but yeah. even sitting here in my house, in my office, my home office, right? Just making these videos, it's so rewarding. It's so fulfilling. And I think that's totally. the beauty of what YouTube has offered, everything is there and it's people who are truly passionate about the things that they're discussing. And I love that totally. about YouTube. And that's, and, and you touch on something super important, like people make videos and if they aren't passionate, it is going to show and nobody's going to call you and bang down your door. If you're making a video like, oh, I got to make a video about escrow because escrow is really important. And you get on the camera and you're monotone, you're reading your script, dude, nobody cares. Nobody and if does. you're not passionate, ain't nobody be they're just gonna be clicking off. I mean, there are there are like 500 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every minute. And if your video is not super engaging, they're out of there. If you're not passionate, you're done. So yes. I mean, my big like big tip to start: make videos about things you're passionate about. If you hate being a real estate agent, dude, check out get do something else. If you love being a real estate agent or you love certain aspects of real estate, make videos about those things because people will. They will read you in a hot second and they'll either be engaged or they'll be gone. Yes, that's 100% true. And for all of you watching, right, like people like Trevor is where you can learn how to do this. It doesn't, you don't have to have crazy equipment, right? Trevor, you were in nope. the industry, right? Nope. You were working with the best in the breed. 
I've got yep. my iPhone here, and I don't know what you're shooting with, but you know, it's you don't need crazy equipment. You can walk around with your phone if you need to. No, no. In fact, I've got a private Facebook where I just made a post yesterday, and I go, here's the thing, here's the reasons that my like a brand new video uploaded yesterday on my tiny channel that nobody knows about is doing well. It's got like you know on YouTube, it's got on a channel that's brand new, it's got like 750 views in yeah. a day, which is good for a new channel, right? It's great. People go, they'll, people will post for years, and they'll get like a 20 views. Like, well, great. Yep. Um, and I said, here's all the things that I did to make that happen. And I didn't mention my software, my microphone, my camera, my editing skills, like all that stuff's irrelevant, man. You can do it all on this. These things are freaking incredible. And people will use the excuse, oh, I got to get a better camera. Like, um, you know who uh, Mr. Beast is, right? You know who Mr. Beast yes, is? Yes, of course. My son okay. loves him, too much to my yeah. brain. Right, yeah. <laughs> man, but they, that guy, he's, he's like 22 years old. He's brilliant. Like That's brilliant, what you got 100,000 followers with an iPhone 5. So if you say, well, I gotta, I haven't sold any deals this month and I don't have enough information and I, gotta, I don't have a good camera. Dude, if you have a phone that you bought in the last five years, you are golden. You can slay it with just your phone. I, I promise, man. And I've got videos on there on my YouTube channel for free that'll show you how to use your phone, how to do better lighting and sound and all that stuff for free. Like nothing costs anything, man. You don't, I'm using a window light and a light that's worth like, you know, 80 bucks, you know, for yep. this and my webcam I'm talking and nobody cares. Like yep. zero people will go, dude, you know, I was going to use you as my real estate agent, but I noticed that your camera only had 10 stops of dynamic range. So I'm going to use somebody else. Nobody says that, dude. It's, it's like, it's people so get true. Through. Nobody what says, they I only hire 4K agents, right? Like that's right. Matter. Nobody, <laughs> nobody cares. You know, they, and the funny thing is agents, the first question they ask is, what camera are you using? What editing software do you use to make that great video? It's like, dude, it doesn't matter, man. It's true. It's, like, I did. It's, it's true. It's true. And and here's the thing, Trevor, right? Is that these things can get better over time. I've got, well, it's off yeah. of the tripod right now. I've got a pretty decent yeah. camera available to me. The honest truth yeah. is I have a day job, right? I'm running list reports. I've got a day job. Right. And so, yeah. you know, you have to cross some minimum threshold of quality, which is audio is key. Audio is more important than video quality, yeah. right? People can't hear you clearly. They're going to tune out, Right. Get some totally. base level of video quality and yep. you're good. I've got a $13 tripod, tripod from Amazon. I'm shooting this. You can't actually see this camera on an iPhone 11 Pro, which is just the phone I use every day for work and for fun, right? It's in my pocket the rest right. of the day. It's on a $13 right. tripod. And I'm using these tethered headsets yep. because the audio quality was better than the AirPods. So that's it. That's all I got. Right, right. And nobody cares. And nobody cares. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Okay. So, you know, let's talk a little bit from your perspective, Trevor, about video. I think there's something that you said, which is, you know, on your YouTube channel where you said the future of, of real estate is video. What does that mean? Why is video so important? Why, why are you committing sort of, you know, your path and your time to creating videos about how to create better videos? Why is this so important? I mean, the... Well, the world is, I mean, with this, with this COVID stuff going on, the world has evolved. It's, it's changed forever, right? It's, it's now it's more acceptable than ever to be remote, to work remotely, to use Zoom. And people aren't face-to-face -face as much anymore. They, and, and, you know, it'll probably slowly, it'll be a little more face-to-face, -face, but people are embracing this online experience, this video experience. And most content, like something like 80% of the content uploaded to the internet right now is video. And if you're not on there, you're going to be irrelevant. If you're still sending out, you know, recipe cards and dropping pencils and calendars, you know, nobody, nobody cares. If you're on radio or TV, cause you got a big budget, like nobody who watches commercials, man, you just, you skip them. People are on Netflix. People are paying. I'd rather pay 10 bucks a month for Netflix and watch a show that have to sit through commercials. I mean, I've got a YouTube premium account. I don't watch ads on YouTube either. It's like, if you want to be relevant at all in your business. You have to get in front of people and you go where the eyeballs are. Where are the eyeballs? They're not on billboards. They're not in classified ads. They're not in the yellow pages. They're not on radio. They're not on TV. They're on freaking internet video. And, and there are a lot of places where you can post videos and I'm on a lot of them, but YouTube is by far, in my opinion, the best one to grow a business long-term. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. It's the same thing. You know, I, I mentioned this on this show before, but I started this on Facebook. I actually started this, Trevor, as a live show on Facebook five days a week. And beside the fact that it almost killed oh, me because it's just a lot to do when you have a day job. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, 
we got yes. a ton of views on Facebook, you know, air quotes on the views. Yep. And what yes. was, what became clear immediately is that YouTube is an engagement platform. I'm, you know, these three second views or whatever they are on Facebook are meaningless. Yep. And I'm looking at our YouTube analytics and I'm seeing 10, 12, 15 minutes of average engagement. And that's, that's meaningful. How, how often do you get that oh, much yeah. time with people? It's incredible. Right. Right. If you can suck them in. And that's the thing. People go, oh, on Facebook, I got more views. Yes, I've got videos with 20,000 views on Facebook. But Facebook counts a view. Like you said, you scroll through, you stop for three seconds. Oh, it's a view. Somebody saw me wave. And then they just mm -hmm. kept going down the feed. But YouTube, as you know, and probably your lot of viewers know, is a search engine, the second largest one in the world, owned by the biggest search engine in the world, which is Google, of course. And if people are finding your videos on YouTube, chances are they are searching for them. So these are engaged viewers. I'd rather have one engaged viewer on YouTube than 100 people that scroll past my feed and saw me wave to the camera. Because what's our goal? I mean, this, we're talking to real estate agents, right? Our, our goal is to sell houses. How do you sell houses? You get people to know, like, and trust you. How do you get them to like and trust you? You hang out with them in person. You become their buddies. You hang out at CrossFit. You go to meetings. And if you mm -hmm. can't do that, you get on video. I mean, how many of you guys have watched a TV show? You watch a show for years and it's like, dude, me and Jack Bauer are buddies. Like if I saw that dude, he would just hug me because we're so tight, you know, because you've watched him in so many or whatever. Like you can tell I'm behind. Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> You're behind. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> I, it's mo I mostly watch you. I do watch a Netflix show here and there now. But I get um, the reference. It's OK. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but you, you, you get it. You know, it's like once you're once you're on. Once you see somebody on video over and over again, you feel like you know them. I had a guy that that has a big Facebook group in the main city I served in California, Simi Valley. And one time he's like, dude, I've been watching all your videos. I saw your open house sign. I just had to meet you. It's like you become a celebrity. Even if you're just on a small guy, like what, 12,000 subscribers? I got a small channel, but people see you as a celebrity. You go to events like, oh, I can't believe I meet you. Like I had one, like I, I teach people. I had to, usually I do, you know, training through my course and, in you know, some private stuff online, but they wanted to come to me directly. I said, I'm coming to my house. And this guy's granddaughter helped him with a video. And she's like, oh, I can't believe I'm seeing you. And this is the studio and I get to sit in front of it. She was like super excited That's to amazing. meet this celebrity. I'm just a dude with a, a camera in front of, you know, on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> nobody, but, but, but it's perception is reality, man. Well, That's what they perceive. And you can be a local celebrity. It's, it's true. And here's, here's the thing. And I'm, I'm beating a dead horse because I talk about this all the time. But every YouTuber will tell me this, and I agree just personally, is that I think that a lot of people, Trevor, think that you have to be Mr. Beast to be successful on YouTube. And you don't, right? I've talked to agents. Um, Karen Carr is one of them. I think you, you know Karen or you've interacted yeah. with Karen, right? Oh, yeah. Karen's awesome Karen. and she's creating yeah. this great content. And she said the same thing, which is, you don't actually have to have a ton of subscribers, a ton of views. Nope. The right people, here's the key, the right people that you met at a cocktail hour or a networking event who go home and Google you because that's what they do. If they yep. can find you, they'll watch your video and they'll connect with you and you don't have to be Mr. Beast, right? And again, for those nope. of you who don't know, this guy's 100 million subscribers. They had to create new categories for this guy. It's crazy, right? Um, yeah. But you don't have to be that. You can have a small and growing target engaged following, and it's going to do what you need. Do you agree with that? Oh, 100%, man. Like I, I said a second ago, you have one. Oh, dude, we're selling houses. Like when we do a transaction, it's 10, 15 grand. You just, all you need is one, man. So they go, only one person watched my video. Yeah, but if that guy called you and you listed his house and you made 15 grand, do you care that you had only one subscriber? I mean, people get caught up in vanity metrics. How many, and I joke in my, I don't know if you've seen my videos, but I joke like, hit that like button for my self esteem, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah, care. I did watch that. It's like, it's like, it, who, your subscribers and your likes and your view count, it, it, it doesn't matter. What matters is having engaged viewers have one engaged viewer a week sell one house a week dude and you're uh you know you're making several hundred thousand dollars a year so it, it people get all all caught up and i and i struggle with that too because i mean my goal with my my channel is to teach people to make videos and to get them to get in my course but it's like oh dude i want views so let me make this for everybody so i get more views and then it it doesn't work it's like i you, you're way better off and, it, and which segues me to the next thing, which is the most important. There's so many most important things, yeah. but this is the one thing that almost every realtor misses. You have to niche. If you're the realtor for everybody, you are what? 
Yeah, nothing. Nothing to, you're you're, nothing to anybody. You're, you're nobody. You're, you're the realtor for nobody, right? Yep. So it's like, no, you got to be, you got to, what is my, who's my focus? And whether or not you're on YouTube or, or even if you're not on social media, you got to be niche. Nobody wants to be a realtor for everybody. It's like, hey, I'm the best. I'm the realtor for Southern California. Are you? No, you're not. You're not. I just sell all the houses. No, there's, you got 10,000 other agents that are trying to sell all the houses. You got to be the, this guy, the guy that's dialed in. It's like, no, I'm, I'm the realtor in Malibu that sells $5 million luxury homes on the beach with pools, period. And be that guy. I mean, everybody wants to be that guy. But shoot, <laughs> yes, horse property, everybody wants to be property, that guy. Um, millennial, millennial guy. You know, choose, choose your niche. And make every video and every channel or every your your banner art, everything you say and be to that audience, and you're gonna you're gonna kill it. You've, so, you've got to dial in your niche. I mean, and people go, I don't know what the niche is. I just want to sell houses. Yeah. Well, who do you hang out with? Where do you go? What do you do for fun? Where do you eat? Who are your people? Make videos for your people, whoever they are in your market, and and you're gonna kill it. Perfect. Stop being the so, agent for everybody. Hundred hundred percent right. And. Everybody who's watching right now is going to think that I totally teed this up and I had you say this, but we didn't even talk about this topic. Talk about beating a dead horse. I just finished an interview right before yours where we talked about this exact same thing. And I've talked about this with yeah. everybody who's successful is that if you're not known yeah. for something, you're not known for anything, right? So finding totally. your niche is everything. And here's the thing though, Trevor, that I found in my experience is that it's very difficult for agents to have the courage to do that because you eat what you kill, yes. right? It's an up and down business. And you're like, how can I say no to this deal even though I know it's the wrong deal because I don't know when the next deal is coming yeah. from. And I'll give you an example, yeah. Trevor. I have a friend who in San Francisco had a goal to be the number one condo salesperson in San Francisco. And what mm -hmm. he did was he literally bought a condo in a new high rise and he only sold units in that building. He literally referred deals across the street. He joined wow. the HOA board, he did all the things. Wow. And he made it to number two in San Francisco for two years. Didn't get to number one, but that's a good place to be that's, in a big market, that's right? That's amazing, dude, yeah. yeah. And that level of focus, although totally. sounds extreme, makes the point. He, he became known yeah. as that guy. Yes, totally, totally. Which segues me to another thing. Like I, I've got a sister that's an Instagrammer. She's got like 130,000 followers on Instagram. She's a professional organizer. And I interviewed her a couple of weeks. I don't know if you saw the video, but I interviewed her a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're, you know, one of the guys on million dollar listing, it's a different story. You're Ryan, whatever, Sirhan, whatever, that's, that's a different story. But if you're just Joe Blow in a regular town and you're going, here's my real estate, you know, life, and here's my daily life, here's what I do, nobody cares. She said, and this is a little controversial, just choose a niche that's not real estate and occasionally mention real estate and just be like, for me, like be the crossfitting real estate agent or the motorcycle racing real estate agent mm -hmm. or the swim guy or just choose something and Every single thing you post on your Instagram feed should be about that specific topic and it should be a tip giving value because people people are like, look how awesome I am. Oh, dude, I'm so amazing. It's like nobody cares, right? Nobody thinks you're awesome. They, everybody thinks they're, that they're awesome. So give them some value. Like, like and, and it's so hard for me because I want to show all these aspects of my life I'm excited about and I'm failing kind of on Instagram because I, 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 I divert too much. Mm -hmm. But it should be, if you're the crossfitting real estate agent, Every tip should be, here's a CrossFit tip, here's a CrossFit tip, here's a CrossFit tip, period. And then they'll know you as, oh, you're the CrossFitting agent. And yeah, you got followers outside your area, you got followers in your area, but you'll be known for something instead of just another one of the 10,000 real estate agents in your market. So it's kind of scary okay. to do, but to niche down, to niche down that hard, um, if you're a realtor on something else, and if you look at her channel, man, she, she spends... She spent a couple hours, two or three times a week, and she'll do like 20 Instagram stories. And everyone's an organizing tip, organizing tips. And people follow her. They just gobble her up. They see her in a store. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm meeting you, Tracy. And she's just like a most regular, genuine, you know, whatever kind of person out there. Yeah. But because she just does every single post is here's an organizing tip with cool stuff. And it's not like it's beautiful stuff. It's like it's a freaking cabinet or a bedroom closet, right? But people love it. Yes, I'm telling 100%. you, niche, no. niche down, man. Very true. So let me ask you one more question. Let, let's wrap with this one, Trevor. So okay. agents are watching right now, right? And they're saying, okay, yet another guy telling me to do video, fine. Yep. What do you say to an agent who needs to get started? Because we're talking about, we talked about cameras. You can use your phone. That's fine, right? Yep. Yep. But they're Nothing like, covered. I don't know how to edit. You're a professional editor. Like, you know, you know everything. Right. I know nothing. Where does yep. somebody get started? The, uh, the best place to start, because one of the biggest 
complaints or fears people have is they're afraid of getting on camera. They're like, I don't how I, I don't like how I look. I don't like like how I sound. I don't want to get in camera. I don't know where to start. Start with the social media platform that you're on right now, and and it's probably Facebook or Instagram, and do Facebook stories or Instagram stories because why? They disappear after 24 hours. They're 15 seconds long. You can do it over and over and over again until you like it and just practice that way. And if you're like, I don't have an Instagram or Facebook account, well, freaking get one. Get an Instagram account. If you have no followers, what a great way to practice. Do three Instagram stories every day talking about your niche, what your specific niche every day, giving tips. It's like, I don't know what to say. Dude, if you're not passionate about something, you know, find a passion. <laughs> like Talk about your passion every single day, yes. three times, 15 seconds, and you'll get better by being on camera. Go back to my, my, my real estate channel, which I'm not even active on now, Jones Home Collective, where we're selling houses in California. And you go to YouTube and sort by oldest. My first videos were terrible, dude. I wasn't like this awesome. Oh, you're just natural. Like people, you're so natural on camera. No, I'm not. I just been, I've made hundreds of videos. So I'm comfortable on camera now and I love it now. When you start out, everybody sucks. You're going to, your first videos are going to suck. Just embrace the suck, man. It's like, just pick it up, do an Instagram story. I've got, if you don't know how, I got YouTube videos. There's a million of them out there by other people, how to make an Instagram story do Instagram stories, do them every single day, seven days a week, do three of them. And I promise you after months, like, oh, that is so hard. Maybe I could do a Facebook yes. live or an Instagram live or a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to edit, man. You can go on, once you're like, oh, I, I kind of got this. I got stuff I can talk about. I got things I know and I'm passionate about. I'm going to do a Facebook live for one minute a, a week. Do a Facebook live and then just work your way up. And then do, then go, okay, I'm brave enough. Now I'm going to do a YouTube live. No editing, no music, no sound effects, no nothing. I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to talk about this super cool stuff I'm passionate about for a minute and or two minutes on YouTube and hit upload and done. And little by little, you'll get better at it. I mean, it's it, it, you get better by doing. You can sit there and watch YouTube videos till you're blue in the face. You're not going to get a shred better until you try. I agree. I agree. Trevor, that is great parting advice. I love the idea of starting with Instagram stories. They are ephemeral, they disappear, right? It's not part of the official permanent record and it's a great way to get comfortable with doing it. And, and like Trevor said, and I've said this a million times, right? Everyone, your first videos are gonna suck, right? And you're yep. gonna get used to looking into, as I am right now, the back of my cell phone that I carry in my pocket, it was the weirdest thing at first, you will get used to talking to the back of a cell phone or yep. whatever you end up using as a camera. Um, Trevor, this is great, you know. So again, yep. for all of you watching, uh, links below to Trevor's channel. There's a ton of cool videos there. Lots of nice, bright thumbnails, which is one of the tricks of YouTube, right? So I can see what you're doing there. Um, oh, yeah. So definitely check it, check all of that out. Trevor, um, I think that's it for today. If you're down to come back on, who knows where you're going to be in the country. I'd love to have you back and maybe we can dive into a specific Absolutely. topic, but really enjoyed this conversation. Thanks, Randy. It's been awesome being here. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon, Trevor. Thanks, man. All right. Well, there you have it. I think some great parting words from Trevor, which is just get going, right? He gave you a starting point. Start with Instagram stories. You can build from there. You can do, you know, one, two minute Facebook lives, right? You can start with some of these more ephemeral, um, you know, no editing needed sort of types of formats or platforms. And then you can build up to this. But also, as he said, you have to find a niche. You can't just put content out there saying, hey, I'm a real estate agent, I sell houses, right? That, that's not gonna work, everybody says that. So what about you is going to be different? What are you going to be known for? So again, all of Trevor's links are below. Click on them, follow him, subscribe to him, all of those things, smash his bell, whatever all those things you're supposed to do. Um, and of course, don't forget that we have a contest running. So please click on that link, enter the contest. We've got some really cool stuff that we're giving away this month. And until tomorrow, be safe, be healthy, be happy. As Trevor said, you know, if you're living Groundhog Day, change it, get out there. They got an RV, they're driving around the country. I think that's amazing. And now is the time, today is the time. That's it for today. We'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody.